I'm located in London uh, and I moved to London this year before that I was in Germany. Thank you. Sophia, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Hi, um, I am a PhD student at the University of Leeds. I'm in Leeds in England, but I will be moving down to London in October. Thanks. Uh, you? Hey all, I am the third co-founder of Open Life Science. I'm Yo, um, and I am also a, an open source technical lead for the Wellcome Trust. I'm in uh, kind of Cambridge, UK. Thank you. Ariel? Morning all, I'm Ariel. I am based in Cambridge, but I'm not in Cambridge at the moment, and I am an OLS2 mentor, um, and in my day job I work with Cambridge Neuroscience. Thank you. Peter? Hi, I'm Peter Van Hurston. Uh, I'm in Cape Town, South Africa, where I work for the South African National Bioinformatics Institute. And I'm here with my project, uh, RSSE Africa. Thank you. Uh, Bailey? I don't know if I pronounced correctly. Bailey Arrington? Do you want Bailey. to? Baby, sorry. I'm really sorry for if I mispronounce your name. Um, uh, Bailey, you're you muted. Mute. Yeah. My name's Bailey. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and my project is called Chronic Learning. It's a collection of open source educational materials. Um, thank you. Really. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry. Ismail? Hi, my name is Ismail. I'm ethics research assistant at the Alan Turing Institute um, and I'm based in southeast London. Thank you. Aidan? Hi, my name is Aidan. Um, I'm a mentor for um, a project um, whose title I don't have at the top of my head at the moment, uh, working with two people in Switzerland. Um, I'm situated in Heidelberg in Germany and I work, um, I do leadership training for um, PIs and postdocs. Thank you. Georgia? Hi, my name is Georgia. I'm a researcher at the Alan Turing Institute and I am working on co-designing a citizen science platform with autistic people and their supporters. Thank you. Marcus? Hi everyone, I'm Marcus. I'm a mentor and a mentee. Um, my project is a machine learning toolbox um, for time series and I'm based in London but currently in Portugal. Thank you. Sandra? Hi, I'm Sangram, currently from India basically. So I'm a bioinformatics solution architect for a biotech firm and my project is like uh, making a, a reproducible uh, guide, practical reproducible guide for bioinformatics applications. Basically. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Renato? Hi everyone, I'm Renato. I'm a bioIT uh, community manager in Embo um, Heidelberg and I'm, and I'm a mentor on this, on this round for the, the awesome project, the Open Science uh, University Montreal. Thank you. Laura? Laura? Hi everybody, I'm Laura. I'm a PhD student at the University of Essex, but I'm based in London and I'm going to be working with Ismail and Sophia on the Turing Way Guide to Ethical Research. Thank you. Um, a second, Marcus. I think we missed, so, so there are a mix between Marcus. So, Marcus, uh, you said yeah. this time, I think. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Marcus, and actually the other Marcus is my mentor. Um, <laughs> and I'm located in Lausanne in Switzerland. And I have a project together with Joel, uh, Joel Hancock. Uh, okay. Yeah, we, we're not entirely sure about our title yet. So maybe let's comment on that later. <laughs> okay, thank you. Pra Pradeep, I don't know, Pradeep, yeah? Yes, yes, it's correct. Hi, I'm Pradeep. I'm a PhD student at the University of Paris. So I'm a mentee for the project uh, uh, Open Platform for Indian Bioinformatics Community. And uh, I'm currently joining from Paris as well. Great, 
Thank you. Uh, Bea, oh, okay, Beatrice, but yeah. Yeah, Bea. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Bea. I'm, I'm based in Freiburg in Germany. Since 10 days I'm working in the European Galaxy um, team here. And my project is about growing the Galaxy community. Thank you. Camilla? Cam Hi, I'm Camilla. I'm a research data scientist at the Turing Institute. And uh, I'm here with the project, the Turing Data Stories, with a couple more people that probably will appear later on today. There in the call. <laughs> Thank you. Emma? Hi, I'm Emma. Um, I'm based in Portsmouth in the UK. Um, I'm a postdoctoral researcher. I'm a paleoecologist and I'm working with Historic England at the moment. Um, but my project for this is about improving awareness and gathering a community for open science in my particular field. Thank you. Kate? Morning everybody, I'm Kate Simpson, I'm a research associate at Imperial College London and a visiting researcher at the Alan Turing Institute and my uh, research looks at design for retrofit, data for design and in this project I'm looking at how we can create an open source um, evaluation protocol to evaluate decarbonisation of homes and I'm working with Ariel as a mentor. <laughs> I'm the mentor. I, sorry, I just say I do need to leave at half nine, but I've scheduled every other meeting and I'll keep to the time. Okay, thank you. Cooper? Uh, hi, I'm Cooper. Um, I'm a cognitive neuroscientist based in Brisbane, Australia, and I'm developing Project Free Our Knowledge, which is a collective action platform to help researchers organize effectively and overcome cultural inertia in academia. Thank you. Um, Olga? Hi, I'm Olga. Um, I'm working at, in IT at the Max Planck Institute in Tübingen in Germany. And I'm Ola's mentor for Eva and Dylan, who couldn't make it today, but uh, will follow the video. Thank you. Um, Ilya Tuth, I'm really sorry if I mispronounced. You can call me Hilia. Hi hey. hey everyone. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you a bit. Can you, yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you, uh, Veronis. I'm Hilia, uh, located in Jakarta, Indonesia, working for ERC, uh, University of ERC as a, a researcher and also uh, for EpiBionet uh, as an exco. And my project is EpiBionet Talks, uh, which is a program from uh, Asia Pacific Bioinformatics Network. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jess? Hi, I'm Jez. I'm the uh, data services lead at the British Library, um, and I'm pleased to be mentoring this year the uh, um, folks to writing an ethics chapter for their Turing Way, which is really cool. Oh, and I'm based here in currently sunny Harrogate in Yorkshire in the UK. Thank you. Um, just uh, some people that I are on the course but are not in the uh, road course. So please add your names and because I'm close to the end and I see that I some people were. Yeah, I saw some face on the call that I could, I didn't call currently. Um, Teresa, sorry. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Teresa. Uh, I'm from Madrid. I'm a postdoctoral bioinformatician in a food research institute. And my project, well, it's just an idea now, and it consists in uh, trying to solve public uh, daily problems with uh, by engaging them, the general public, with the scientists. That's it. Thank you. Hi, oh, yes. Hi, I'm Harriet from Kenya. I'm a master's student at uh, Jomo Kenyatta University. I'm an open science mentee and I'll be working with Naomi Penfold, hopefully to create awareness also on open science as I work on an open database. Thank, Thank you. you. Keraga? Keraga? I don't know. Keraga. 
Uh, hello, my name is Karega Pulin. I'm a master's student at the University of Nairobi in Kenya. Uh, my project is an idea now, it's a platform that allows the connects uh, that connects universities, uh, science clubs in universities in Kenya, and promotes open and collaboration uh, and my mentors are Sarah Gibson yeah thank you thank you Kevin Kevin oh, sorry Hello, I'm Kevin. Um, I'm a research software engineer at the Alan Turing Institute. I'm also working on the Turing data stories with Camilla, Yo, and some others. Thank you. Uh, Tor Torres and Venkak. Venkak, sorry, I'm really. Hello, hi, I'm Thoris. I'm from the Digital Curation Center uh, in Edinburgh in the UK. Uh, we do all things to do with research data management, open science and so forth. So I'm just observing here today. Thank you for allowing me to join. Thank you. Hi, and, uh, I'm Van Katz. I'm actually also from the DCC in Edinburgh and I'm here for the same reason. I'm just sitting in and observing what you guys are about. Um, I personally happen to come from a life sciences background, so this is very interesting to me. Thank you. Thank you. Brenda? Uh, hi, my name is Brenda. I'm from Kenya. I'm currently doing an MSc in bioinformatics in Pwani University. I'm an OLS mentee working under Naomi Penfold. Uh, we'll be doing a project on creating a database. Thank you. Um, Sebastian. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Sebastian. I'm Sebastian. Um, I'm based in, in Munich, um, Germany, and I'm working on open source um, hardware projects. Um, for example, open source piping robots. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Katarina. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm Katharina, um, a PhD student at the Center for Research and Interdisciplinarity in Paris. And uh, in the last month, I've cooperated with Georgia from the Autistica, like who's working on the Autistica Citizen Science Platform at the moment. And I was uh, just uh, asked to join her mentor team and so I'm rather ob observing today. Thank you. I'll take over for a second. So we have Gerald next. Uh, sorry. Hello, I'm Joel. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm working with Marcus and I'm being mentored by other, the other Marcus. And our project is based around uh, using uh, uh, topological data analysis to analyze uh, image data. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Piv. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Piv. I'm a scientific training officer from the European Bioinformatics Institute in Cambridgeshire. Um, I'm a mentor on OLS2, and I'm supporting and um, mentoring um, Bailey Harrington, who's working on the chronic learning project. Leading, sorry. Awesome. Do we have someone we missed? Um, please let us know. We'd love to know. You're on the call. No? All right. That was that was all. Welcome everyone and I'll give it back to Bernice. Thank you. Sorry for yeah, uh, for the miss. Yeah. Um yes. Uh thank you for the introduction from everybody. Uh thank you also for the ice breaking question. So we have some nice answer from the ice breaking where the question was name a dream location vacation location <coughs> if you could be anywhere in the world or outside currently. So yeah. Iceland, Greece, Norway, Hawaii, uh Tumbung too. So some nice locations where I think we would all love to be currently if we could. Um, 
I will try to give a short introduction to uh, welcome to Open Lab Science, if my daughter allows me to do it uh, now. -ish. And for that, I need to share my screen. I uh, will do it now. -ish. Um, yep. Pam, pam, pam. I, I don't. Uh, yeah. If you need us to step in at any at any point, Berenice, just let us know. Yeah, I hope I hope it will be. Okay. Um, sorry. Oh, okay. Can you do it? Sorry, I'm sorry. All good. All good. <laughs> okay, right. I will open up these slides and share my screen. So. Uh, you can also see the slides yourself if you wish on line 177 in the HackMD document. Um, right now, let's do the sharing of the screen. Okay, can you all see the slides? I've got a thumbs up, fabulous. All right, uh, so as uh, Bernice has been saying, welcome all to the very first cohort call for Open Life Science. So first of all, we will just talk a little bit about what we are, uh, what our values are and what we'll be focusing on. Uh, so make sure that I can make the next slide. Uh, I think we've briefly introduced ourselves. Uh, so the three co-founders co are Bernice, uh, myself and Malvika. Um, and what we believe is that to be effective, science should be shared openly with others and made freely available. Um, I, I think most, one of the most important things that we believe is that we should be building upon each other's shoulders rather than competing with one another. Uh, and that's only possible if we actually share the work that we do rather than saving it uh, in case it's wrong or for credit or for any other reason. Uh, and the more exciting part of this is that you're here with us and we're going to try and go through a journey where we talk about how we can actually effectively share our work. So huge welcome um, and we're excited to be working with you. Uh, so what we focus on is helping our early stage researchers, potential academic leaders and really anyone who has an interest uh, in open science uh, practice. So you don't have to be an early stage career if you want to still go through the program, that's fine as well. Uh, and one of our focuses is to make sure that you become an ambassador for open science. So whilst we, we have everyone applying with a specific project that you may be working on, we hope that this will actually apply to all aspects of the, um, the science and the research that you're working on and that hopefully this will be something you can also pass on to others in the future. Um, and again, we can only really advance when we're actually working with, with, with other people rather than against other people, um, building on each other's successes. Um, uh, but one of the problems is that people are often afraid of actually sharing. Uh, we try and break down as many barriers here as we can, um, as well as some of the fears that may or may not actually be things that people tend to encounter all that often. Uh, so some, some of these fears might be being criticized or being scooped. Um, But we, we, we like to talk about working uh, openly without feeling vulnerable or without worry, having to worry so much about, some, about these types of things. Uh, so we will be working uh, one step at a time to go through some of these steps. So you may have already looked at the Open Life Science syllabus. In fact, if you've applied, there's a very good chance you've spent quite a long time looking at this. Um, but because we have this over a whole 16 weeks, it sort of means that we, we touch on a few concepts and then you have a week or two to actually apply it to your project. And then we touch on more concepts. And this means that rather than this being a concentrated, you know, one week program or something, it means that you have a lot of time to reflect and reapply and work on things in between all of the cohort calls. And then there's also your mentors who will speak with you on every other week to actually chat about how, how this is going and reflect and figure out and act as an external viewpoint. Um, and so the cohort covers the cohort based training. So this will be things like today. Today is largely an intro, but we'll go into a lot more um, specific subjects over the next 16 weeks. We also have the one on one mentoring 
And then the hands-on practice is really up to uh, you as project lead. So this is the part where you apply what we've been learning to your projects. Um, and one thing that you will see us talking about a lot is the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework. So uh, the Open Life Science was born as um, a, the child of the Mozilla Open Leaders. Um, that doesn't run anymore, actually, but they've left a lot of amazing materials. You, so occasionally you may see Mozilla on some of our slides or on some of the handouts that we provide. Uh, because they, they launched a bunch of different amazing uh, open leadership style programs. This one specifically focuses on open science, but this has also been applied to AI and to hardware and to uh, many, many other different areas um, that people are actually applying the open leadership framework. And it basically is a way of build, uh, structuring building community and building um, collaboration and pathways into the projects that you're working on. Um, this is a phrase that you will also see a lot of the time and we often bold different parts of it depending on what we're actually talking about. Uh, so I'll read it out. Open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. Uh, so depending on the lesson that we may be teaching in any given week, we may be talking about the empowering or we may be talking about the designing or some other part. So we, you'll see this um, repeated a lot, but with a different emphasis each time as we go through. And this is part of the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework. So this is, again, a slide you may see a lot. We will highlight different uh, boxes within this or different bullet points within this as we go along. Um, but it just sort of gives you an idea of some of the focuses that we look into. So we look at uh, participation and inclusion and different ways that we can uh, build that into the program and empower people. We look at ways that we can build sharing into the program. And we also look at ways that uh, we can design so that people understand what's going on effectively. Um, and so some of the different roles of open science communities and some of the different things that we will touch upon over the next uh, few weeks will include sharing your data. We will talk about sharing your source code uh, if you have source code. So we're not expecting everyone to do so, um, but some of you may do so. Uh, equally, we, we talk a bit about sharing hardware, but again, it's fine if you don't have hardware. These are just some of the different things that you may encounter. Um, and it's also good to be aware of as well. Um, now we talk about dissemination, such as sharing your papers and protocols in the more traditional ways and that, that can be open access or if you're sharing your results early, uh, that's preprinting. I think that's actually been highlighted a lot recently with COVID. Um, perhaps preprints have become a lot more common and in the spotlight than they used to be. Uh, we talk about sharing reviews for your papers, uh, sharing training, such as open education. And also collaborating openly with the public. Um, so citizen science may not always be pinpointed as a method of open science, but it definitely does involve uh, a lot of openness. Um, and also just generally networking and connecting with others in your fields. Um, so these are a few of the things that we cover. It's definitely not the only things we cover, but some of the things to look forward to over the next few weeks. We'll also invite a lot of guest speakers to speak on these specific topics. Um, and one of the most important premises of open life science is that openness should be built in by design to what you're doing rather than by accident uh, or by a default. Um, and to explain why that is, so this is a very sort of tech oriented um, explanation, but looking at 160 tech companies, um, this study actually found that the level of strategic intent and openness tended to correlate with market performance. Um, or to make that slightly less techy sounding, basically when you intentionally design the ways that people interact with you and the ways that people join your community and the ways that people continue to participate in your community, it tends to be a lot more effective than if you simply put something online and say, please come. Uh, so we, we try and focus on building these effective, useful, inclusive communities that actually are designed to have people participating and enjoying that participation. Um, uh, yeah, design openness into your work and don't let it be a thoughtless default. Um, so, achieve positive culture change. Yes, okay, <laughs> right. So one thing that we're looking at also is allowing you to achieve a positive culture change within your community. So we don't want to accept the status quo in some places that may be that things aren't open or in other places that the opening, open communities aren't necessarily inclusive or um, empowering so we, we like to encourage that we, we share a leadership we share a vision um, and we push towards the things that are actually meaningful 
And I think that's everything for the intro. I will unshare. Any questions at this point? I will also add that if uh, you would rather, it's absolutely okay to type um, questions in the HackMD. So this is actually a document for everyone and not just, you know, um, you, like you can type in it whenever. It doesn't have to be um, waiting for prompts or anything like that. So we have some question and answer spaces at, um, oh, we don't even have an, a question and answer section here. Um, but I was gonna say, if you want to put any questions or answers, please put them in around line 164. And I will leave that and we will check back if there's any questions later on. Um, but for now, uh, we have a breakout room. So this is uh, basically, hopefully you all have had the chance to maybe look at breakout rooms. I know we haven't done quite so much of a Zoom introduction as we would have in previous rounds because the world has gotten very used to Zoom recently. Um, but just in case, uh, breakout rooms, effectively we will be split up into small groups of I think around three or four people per room. Uh, you will then have, we have some prompts to discuss and if you have at any point any questions or you're not sure what we're asking for then we have, there's a nice little raise your hand button or maybe it's ask for help actually that you can press and then we can actually be transported into your room to, to just come and see what's going on. Um, but the goal for this breakout room is uh, to spend a few minutes chatting with one another in smaller groups and to discuss the following three things. So they are, what was your path to this program? How did you get into working openly? And um, how has working openly affected your leadership? Uh, so with three people, that means you'll get about three minutes per person. Um, we will set a timer so you'll be able to see the timer counting down on the breakout rooms uh, so you'll get an idea of when the breakout room will finish. Uh, is that reasonably clear and can I have some thumbs up if so? Or thumbs down if necessary. <laughs> awesome, I have some thumbs up, that's amazing. Okay, right, I'm just going to set up the breakout rooms and click on the breakout rooms button and four participants per room three okay right i'm sending you all off now and go Okay, I just click re-record um, because I had paused it just so we are on the same page. We are talking about vision and mission and you all are adding your project and vision statement. The next step would be we put you back in a different breakout room, hopefully, where you can go back and talk about your vision with uh, your team member in that breakout room and uh, discuss it in a lot more open ways try to understand what others are trying to achieve and how similar or different is your vision one of the reasons we are doing it because there are a lot of projects that share similarity in terms of their goals their tasks that that is involved in building their project and over the course of 15 weeks we would like you to connect with each other based on uh, inspiration similarity of the project or anywhere you see you can build a bridge between your project and theirs um, okay, so our breakout room will be quite short and we'll put three people in one room just to discuss your vision and mission. Is that uh, clear about what we're going to do in the breakout? Yes, Jess. Uh, my question is, uh, what would you like the mentors to do? Mentors can hang out sorry. with us. Uh, they don't, okay. we'll put you in breakout room. You don't need to go in if you don't want to, uh, okay. but it's also okay if you want to hang out with them. Thank you. Great. Uh, you Are we ready to send them? 
Uh, we are just about. Um, so I'm going to take a look. And if anyone is in a room with like not enough people because the mentors have been assigned and haven't joined, uh, just like put a hand up and ask for help and we'll sort it out. I'm sending you all off now. So I see that you've already found what we want you to do. Some people are writing that it's really great that people have similar ideas and it would be great to collaborate. Uh, we will aim to do that from next week onwards and towards the end of the call, we'll show you how we want to facilitate that. A couple of you have already figured out, um, but it would be good for us to also show you around a bit. process of writing vision statement was hard, but it really helped us think through. That's, that's absolutely correct, because this vision exercise actually asks you to think about different components, which you may not have originally thought about. So the exercise is very, very cool. The community building side of it seems to be the most intangible part uh, in that we know we want to contribute something ourselves, but the point is to be able to support and build the foundation for others. Uh, I, I, I am very excited about whoever has written that because in 15 weeks, that would be the most tangible part you're going to do in this project. Uh, it does seem like that this is a community building things and it just happens in the community, but we have a process set up where you're going to document all these community processes. And that would be not just useful for your current project, but you would be able to apply that in all your future work. Okay, I would love to hear at least one person talk. Uh, does anyone want to share something with everybody in the main room? <laughs> okay, Georgia. Yeah, I, I found it really, really interesting getting a chance to speak to people about their projects and just the kind of level of enthusiasm. And be, I, I find being around people who have similar values really energizing. Like it gives me so much um, enthusiasm for my work as well. So thank you so much. This has already been really wonderful. Good charge, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, please go back and read these notes afterwards as well uh, just so you know what others are doing beyond the breakout room you were in so i'll hand it to you to talk about open canvas cool yeah i'm going to share my screen and i'm going to share the right one fast this time and i'll be so proud of myself okay okay right you can see my screen I have thumbs up. Amazing. Okay, let's be on the right slide. Right, yeah. So we're going to talk about Open Canvas. Uh, and this is another exercise that basically helps you think through in a structured way what you're going to be doing um, by forcing you to fit all of your ideas into a tiny A4 sheet. <laughs> um, so yeah, Open Canvas allows you to think through your project strategy. And there are also some examples available. And we will ask you to actually finish this on, on your own after the call. And as I mentioned, we will be showing this statement uh, many different times with different sections of it bolded each to each time as we go through. So here we're talking about designing our projects uh, that empower others to collaborate with inclusive communities, but it's specifically the design that we're thinking about here. And the other, uh, what's the word slide that will become very familiar here is the, um, like I mentioned earlier, focus on the design within the Mozilla Open Leadership Framework. So we're talking about helping people understand, share, and participate and feel included. Uh, but I will get onto what the Open Canvas actually is, which is perhaps the most exciting bit of this. So it looks something like this. Uh, we have a link, I think it's in the, probably in the HackMD notes, you'll be able to see a link to that. Um, and what this does is it provides you a really structured way to think about what the uh, product that you're creating is and the community that will be involved both contributing and consuming it. Um, and 
moving on to the next slide here are some examples we can talk through this a little bit more so um, you can work through this in a sort of nice little flow way to think about the things but if you get stuck on any given box it's also okay to skip one and then come back to it later uh, so looking on top left we talk about the top problem or problems that you want to solve with the project that you're working on uh, so if I was to do this, for example, for OLS, the top problem we might want to solve would be the lack of openness in the scientific community. Uh, the solution for this, uh, you think about what the solution, and again, if there's more than one problem, you might want to put more than one item in this box. Uh, for OLS, I guess our answer to solving the problem would be to create a program that allows other people to learn more about openness and also to share it with others then how will we measure success? And since I'm doing this on the fly for OLS, I'm almost in a minor panic here. What do I, how do we, how do we measure OLS's success? I'll say, given that we have a much bigger cohort for round two than round one, that this looks like some measure of success. So if we look at counting the number of people who are participating, um, and the number of mentors and experts that we have on board, if we keep on seeing that climb um, or at least remain the same rather than uh, shrink, then I think we are doing really well. Uh, for your project, this will obviously be something else. <laughs> um, resources required. So this might be that you need uh, people's time. It might be that you need technical support. It might be skills that you need. It might be infrastructure. It might be lab space. There are a lot of different things that actually the resources that you might be looking for could be. So it really depends on what your project is. Um, and then moving on from here, you start thinking, okay, so this is roughly what I want to design. And now let's start thinking about the people. And so you can start thinking about the contributor profiles. And so this will be people who are actually helping out with what you're doing. And you want to think who, who they are, what they might like to do, um, how they might like to contribute. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, you may want to be thinking about the people who have the expertise that came from the resources required section. And then you start thinking about the user profiles. So these are the people who are actually consuming what you're creating. These may be the same people as the contributors or they may be other people. It really depends on what you're designing. Um, and then you also start thinking about the channels. So now that you know the people that you're gonna be working with, both the people creating the work and the people who are consuming it, you can start thinking about how you will get these new contributors and how you'll get the new users. And again, it's okay if these uh, groups overlap as well. It's, you don't have to, they might be distinct people or they might not. Um, and once you've thought through all of those, maybe you have a unique value proposition. So this is um, perhaps reflecting back on that vision, uh, the, the statement that we've just been working on. Maybe you want to tweak it or maybe you just want to bring that uh, mission and vision statement right in here. Um, and I remember I was asked to do this I sort of thought, okay, this looks a bit tedious, but by the time I'd actually worked through what I could put in each box and discussed it with my mentor, I found it really useful. Like I thought really critically about my project and the things and the people that I needed to bring on board. So I would highly recommend spending some time thinking about this and going through it with other people. Um, and if you're not sure, bouncing it off other people, like maybe in the OLS chat, for example, is a really good way to help you think critically through the bits that you may be struggling with. Um, okay, I think it's going to ask me on my slides to walk through on all the stuff that I've just done, but I'll use that as a moment to have a really quick recap. So left side, we're talking about the thing that we're creating. Right side, we'll be talking about the people. Um, talking about the problems we want to solve, the solution uh, on the way that, we, that you want to apply to that problem, the ways to measure that success, uh, and then thinking about the resources that you need to get there. Once again, think about the contributor profiles, what types of contributors um, and what sort of personalities, people, backgrounds they may have. Um, right, I'm going to skip that slide because I'm not sure what to say about that one. <laughs> and then also think about your users um, and the channels that you may have to get them. Yeah, I'm just going to stop repeating this because I think I went through it when I was just looking at the big slide. Um, and here we also have an example open canvas here that is looking about contributorship badges for science. So this is just working through some of the demos, for example, as well. So uh, if you look at the top, we're looking at lack of recognition uh, for certain contribution types. And the, the solution here was to give people badges to gamify it. Um, and for, in this case, the metrics that we had was the number of publishers using the badges and the number of badges rewarded. 
Uh, in the bottom left, you can see some of the resources. You can see someone said we're going to use some free hardware, a Heroku process, um, that's just a type of server. And they've talked that they also need resources to develop this, to design this, and also networking resources. So publishers and orchids, people who are going to buy in to actually using these badges. So some of the different types of resources you might need. Uh, moving over to the community profiles, that's on the left. We've got contributors, might be developers at publishers and at ORCID. Um, and then also that you have researchers who care about the idea of these contributions and maybe want to code or want to get the badges. Uh, moving upwards one box, you can see the user profile. The users will be publishers, researchers, and once again, it might be ORCID. Um, and then the channels for these people, you're looking at a buy-in from an employer. Um, so you know, it's, it's, I guess if you want these badges to matter, then you probably want your employers to care about the badges as well. And so this is thinking critically about who's going to be contributing and how, uh, as well as users who, um, and who may want new features. And then you can reflect back onto the user profiles as to who those users are. Uh, and then we have some uh, user channels. And this is looking mostly at social media and it talks at ways to get these people. And then finally, moving all the way back up to the top, the, the top right square, we have a unique value prop proposition after having thought through this. So the unique value is issuing badges to credit authors um, and that the author roles may also be on your papers. And so these are the reasons that people might want to buy into this. So I hope, hopefully that sort of elucidates how the open canvas can help you think through a given pro uh, problem. And if you wish to run your own open canvas, there's also a short link here, bit.ly slash OLS dash open dash canvas. Uh, but I think there's probably a link in the hack and D notes as well. Um, and I think that's everything on open canvas. Any questions or notes at this point? I will stop sharing. Okay, um, so you can add questions if you wish at line 265. Uh, has my HackMD frozen? It might have. I'm going to just refresh that. Um, and in the meantime, uh, Malvika, do you want to move on to the road mapping? Yeah, so the second thing that we are demoing today, so the reason you went through the open canvas and the second thing that I'm going to show is the road mapping. We're talking through it, but you'll be coming back to both of them in next two weeks because you're going to build that on your own. So these 10 minutes does not define the explanation. These are just introduction for you. So with that disclaimer, I'm going to share my screen. So that's road mapping. All right, so we are still in the open by design. Uh, what we want to do is to discover how to use a roadmap to plan our work and find contribution for our open project. And we're gonna also look at a few examples uh, as we saw for open canvas. So open leader design, and now we're gonna move to a bit about empowering others to collaborate within the open communities. And when we think about empowering others, it's a lot about knowledge sharing. Keeping with this framework, we are at this part. We are still designing for participation and inclusion. We want to think about what the project's identity is and what are ways people uh, interact with my project. The intention behind this is to create an, a welcoming space, uh, make a good impression so others know that they are in the right place and you know that you're communicating well. Explain how one can get involved in your project and let them know what's happening next so they can decide if this is the right project for them to be involved in. So what goes into the roadmap? There are three things that you would be thinking about that would go into the roadmap. First is project summary and you actually creating this welcoming space, uh, telling people how to get involved and what is the timeline. Timeline may be changing quite a lot, but it is still a good idea to tell them what you are at, what would you be doing next? 
so this project summary and welcoming space would require would be required so people who are visiting your project can get oriented with where your project has information what kind of resources do you have it is important for them to understand where they are uh, often in a new project the biggest blocker is that the newness of that space and you want to help them to feel familiar with the space that they are in having the project summary as the first page uh, so if you all are familiar with uh, github you would be calling it as a readme but if you are familiar with any other product, you would always see a summary page which gives an overview of the project. It helps to give a clear focus on when writing the rest of the roadmap. Second is how to get involved. This is about your contributors. Uh, it's possible that some contributors are available to jump in right away, but they can do that only if they know what is the task in hand and if the skills that they have is actually appropriate for your project. Some people might not be available right now, but they know about your project and want to come back. And they should also know how they can get involved when they're coming back. So you need to have a documentation that you they would be able to check out. This is the star of your roadmap, the timeline. It organizes tasks to complete your project around milestones. This is, again, we're gonna come back to all these concepts in the future calls, but these are for you to think about already how do you see your project in the next weeks or so? How do you see your project uh, at the end of OLS or how do you see it afterwards? So you need to think about milestone. These are significant turning points or events that will move the project forward. So this is also allowing you to assess what the progress of your project has been. You can have a status goal, for example, a feature release or a minimum viable product. Uh, you can also be hosting an event, for example, giving a talk or attending a hackathon or hosting a community call. You can have time frame as well. You can define your milestone in three levels. You can have a short term, you can have a medium term and a long term goal. Uh, therefore, anyone who's available right now can get involved in short term. People who want to come back, they would be looking at medium and long term milestones. Then just telling the milestones is uh, not enough. You are the project lead and therefore you need to define what kind of uh, direction you want to take and these directions can be clarified by listing out the tasks that these milestones will involve. Um, you can, and these are iterative process again, right? This is, this is not something that we're expecting you to complete right away, but this is the process you want to uh, implement in your project. So you would want to list tasks by stating what needs to be done, what does the success look like, and the success in terms of uh, what would complete a project milestone, one single milestone. You don't need to think about a full project at the moment. You also wanna share pointers to get started. And these pointers could be skill building resources, or it could be about contribution guideline. It could be anything that can help your contributor to feel that they are in a position to get involved. And you also need to state why this task is important and reinforce your vision. And this is very useful because these contributors are there to support your project, not work for you. So you don't need to look at them as someone who will complete a task, but they, you want to involve them in building a project and make them feel as part of your journey. So how to share the roadmap? We, you can have a file called roadmap.md, which is marked down, but you can start as well with a simple document, which can be the first page of your project if you are thinking of building a website. In a GitHub, it could be a readme file. Uh, you could also create issues, um, and these issues can have uh, labels. For example, you can look at these two examples. Again, as I said, you're gonna come back to these slides and you, you will go through it slowly one by one and you will be able to look at these examples. So I'm going to open one example because we have some time. So this is a roadmap that Open Knowledge Maps uh, on Open Discovery have written. This is their road, this is what it looks like. They have a motivation of what this project is about they give an introduction to open knowledge maps and they list out all the resources that they have developed, what kind of services they have, what kind of infrastructure they have, 
what kind of community engagement plan they have, what openness means to them, what do they think their sustainability of the project would be like, and what is the governance. So this is, a lot of them might be quite high level for a new project, but if your project has existed for a while, you might wanna also think about up to that detail. And then you have a work plan, and let's look at the work plan. In the work plan, they have clearly, clearly written what, what are the main three pillars for them are. They explain each of them. For each of them, they actually uh, provide what kind of infrastructure that they are using. And they have gone into as much detail as it is required for them to ensure that their contributors know about their project. So that this might be quite detailed. Over the next few weeks, we will also share uh, some examples with you in the Slack or um, in the notes. So please have a look at all those. And I'm sure you might have your own ideal project in mind. It's a good chance for you to go back to those projects and look at how they're doing it and why they're doing it that way. Okay, so with that, I'll say um, that we can finish this part. Any question we have? So to repeat this were th these two talks that we did last uh, about open canvas and road mapping, these will form assignments for you for the next two weeks. And it's a good chance for me to actually start closing it and tell you what your uh, work would look like in the next two weeks. So first of all, uh, we would like you to collectively think about a name for your cohort. So our cohort last week were called Open Seats, which was very metaphorical because they were all creating their own plans. What we want you to do is to propose cohort names, discuss this on Slack, discuss this on mailing list, and uh, whatever you like, bring it to us in the next cohort call and we're gonna uh, give you an official name. You can start by putting the idea already in line number 297 onward and people can upvote it by plus one. Um, another thing is that a, a couple of you have already figured that we have a repository which will be, we will be using for issues. And I'm gonna put, this, put the link down here. So if you click on that link and I'm gonna quickly share for 30 seconds my, Screen. So this is the link and this is your repository from OLS. We will be adding a lot more detail, but this, this one will be for you to use the issues. I'm not sure how many of you have experience with GitHub, but even if you don't have experience with GitHub, I'll quickly show you how you will be working with this. You definitely need a GitHub account. You come to this location in the issue. You create a new issue by clicking on this and get started. When you click on get started, um, I'm gonna cheat and I'm going to open Georgia's issue. You will be able to add your team na names. So project team is Georgia and Katharina and the mentor is Anelda. So you would be adding your details. And with that, you will create your issue. What, they, what you will be able to do for the next week onward is to click in here as you go along based on what you have done. We have listed all the assignments here. So for example, in the next week, you will be coming up here and clicking on what has been done. This is also for you to communicate with others in the cohort. So everybody in the cohort will be able to see all the 30 projects that we have, and they will be able to visit each other's project, comment on each other's project, talk about it in the Slack, and that would be a way for you to collaborate with each other. And please take some time to go through these assignments. Uh, one of the biggest assignments that we have is to understanding your own role as a mentee in the project. Uh, this is something we would like to talk about in the next two weeks as well, but at the moment we have given you a list of information that we want you to reflect upon is what is your role as mentee uh, and what does your mentor's role are in this, your project, in this project. Um, this is a reflection exercise because we want you to take accountability and ownership of your work. Your mentors are there to supervise you, not do the work for you. 
and you need to appreciate their time and advice. And this is something that we will be uh, exploring in next weeks as well. With that, I'll close because we are uh, already one and a half hours in. Is there any question that we can discuss before we all go away? Okay, I have left you all in shock. That wasn't my intention, <laughs> but I'm glad that you all are looking at everything. Please reach out to us anytime you have any confusion, if you feel lost, if you need more resources that we haven't discussed today, we're always happy to help and help each other. You have Slack, you have mailing list, connect with each other. You all are extremely amazing project leads and your projects have a lot of things and similar um, the, the features that you're trying to build. So please take time to understand what others are doing and connect based on um, your shared values and ideas. So with that, I'll stop recording. <laughs>